You know we've been open up at the Reptarium now for three years in September. As a matter of fact, this September, if everything goes well with the world and the, the COVID thing and stuff like that, we're gonna actually have like a barbecue get together the second or third weekend to celebrate our third anniversary. Cause last year we weren't able to celebrate. So we're really excited about that. I'll keep you guys updated on the progress of that if whatever happens. But the fact is, is that it's been an amazing experience to be here for three years, work with so many animals, you know, add a bunch of animals I had never worked with. And the truth is, is that, you know, I'm pretty content with what we have have right now as far as animals work. I don't even know that there's really that big of a list of things that I want to continue to get uh, with the exception of uh, you know a couple things like Bismarck ring pythons, olive pythons. I'd like to get al albino olive pythons. Daisy is a pretty incredible animal. Obviously she's a lavender albino reticulated python and the other day I told you a little history about the albino Burmese python. Well ironically enough the same guy Bob Clark actually pioneered the albino reticulated python. And I have a feeling the same guy that got the albino Burmese was Anne and Wong had maybe got the albino reticulated python. I could be wrong about that, but the interesting thing is that Bob ended up importing a male lavender albino reticulated python, but when it came in, it actually had a broken back and was almost paralyzed on the backside. Now, we all thought like, wow, what an amazingly beautiful snake, but obviously you can't breed a male if it doesn't have function of its back end to actually be able to breed. Well, over the course of a year or so, it gained some of that function back and it did actually copulate a female. Bob ended up producing a clutch of what he thought was heterozygous, and a lot of people, I'm gonna be honest with you, including myself, thought, probably retain sperm from another male or something like that. But actually, when he raised those up and bred them, he produced the first albino reticulated pythons. And I'll never forget the ad he posted right after he produced those lavender albino reticulated pythons. It says, have you ever seen a living Picasso? Yes, that is living art. So Bob has been responsible for some pretty big hitters when it comes to the animal world, there's no doubt about it. And there wouldn't be lavender albino retics if it wasn't for this story. Typo bull snakes, Florida blue garter snakes, and golden pythons. You know, I take you guys on the journey of the breeding, the egg laying, the egg cutting, the hatching. Well, now they've actually started to shed and I wanted to show you because that's when they really start looking cool. This was actually a pastel female that was bred to a black pewter cypress. And this just happens to be a black pastel cypress ball python right here. And I just love the way the colors pop on this one. And then this one is basically the same snake just with pastel added. So this be a black pewter cypress and it is an absolute gorgeous animal. I mean, I tell you what, that thing looks incredible. The cypress gene just adding the cleanliness to it and just making kind of cool colors. I mean, it's definitely a lot different than just a normal black pewter for sure. And it turned out really well since it shed. And then this one is really that cool silvery purple one that we started to hatch out. And it looks great now that it sheds. So this is basically a super pastel, black pastel cypress ball python or what they would call a silver streak cypress ball python. I mean, that thing is an absolute ripper, loving it. Then you guys know that I love pie ball ball pythons. And finally, a couple of them have shed out they look absolutely incredible. The thing that's great about pides is again, not only the fact that they have that stark white, beautiful contrast to them, but actually the pattern has got more orange to it than a normal ball python. So they just look absolutely incredible, especially once they first shed. Then there was that genetic stripe to the banana pastel G stripe. So they came out really good. And I tell you what, once this one shed out, this is just a pastel G stripe. Whoo doggy, I tell you what, that is one gorgeous snake. Then this one is actually a pastel banana G stripe. So it's the same mutation as the dad was, and it's really cool. The pastel with the G-stripe and banana makes this really faded kind of soft looking snake. It looks absolutely ridiculous. But in all honesty, I actually like the banana G-stripe without the pastel even more. Don't get me wrong, I love the pastel banana G-stripe stuff, but when you actually don't have the pastel in it, it's just a little bit more vibrant. That bright orange with almost that flaming orange stripe down it, that thing is an absolute ripper. I'll keep updating you as the ball python shed. I cannot wait for that pumpkin clutch to shed here in the next couple days. I'll definitely be showing you those guys. Red-sided garter snake snakes, pied alligators, albino water monitors? So Butterscotch actually has got a little bit of shed on it, so blew up his cage, stuff like that. Jay, you, uh, looks like Butterscotch is ready for you. I know, and I am not ready. <laughs> what do you think's gonna happen? Let's start back from the big team. Um, Jay's about? just back from vacation. First thing he's doing since he's been back, uh, butterscotch. Great way to start. And it looks like she's really happy. Yeah. She missed you, you, Jay. All right. Oh, oh my God, she definitely thinks she's gonna get fed. Never done this by myself. Before. What? All right. So the best thing to do is probably open up that that cage, that side. Well, yeah, but that's the feeding side. And my face is gonna get hot. No. Nope. This is nope. so what? amazing. I love you so much, Dad. Now you just have to just touch her yeah. face, sir. 
It's she okay. knows that there's no food I now. I can go up there now? Yep, you go up there now. Yep, now just grab her there and then just start reeling her out. I would keep her, yep, keep her going now. Just try to get her head out. There you go. She's not going to bite you. She's not doing anything. She's fine. Here you go. Hi. Okay, so you get up on the ladder. She's got to keep her moving now. Yep, there you go. There she goes. Good girl. Nope. Don't let her nope. go back in. I won't. Okay. Bring her down. Like this. Keep her going. And that's it. CJ, good job. Welcome back. There you go. Yay. Easy, right? Yep, that was nothing. <laughs> Saltwater crocodiles, scrub pythons, annulated boas. I absolutely love this chuckwalla. It is such an amazing animal. I mean, I've always loved chuckwallas, so that's awesome. But the fact is, is that this is its favorite spot. You know, almost every day when I come in, he's literally chilling right on that. And I think the reason is, is there's actually a nice hot spot for him right there. And he just loves it. And then he, he's just, he's so crazy. I mean, I don't know, but I think that's the way to get to the top of that light and get really basking. Right there is probably about 120 degrees. So he loves it up there. And he just, uh, it's so cute to see him chill up there. Maybe I have to put some other branches that are a little bit bigger, especially as he gets larger, because uh, he's not going to fit on these twigs very much longer. Madagascan ground boas, sun gazers, Madagascan tree boas. As you guys know, I keep saying that we're on step three, three and a half when it comes to the reptile expansion. Actually, going to head back over to my buddy Steve Bashy at Bashy Aquatics and give him the schematics of the actual aquarium side to find out really where the filtration is going to go and stuff like that, because that's the big thing. We can have that beautiful stingray thing, but if we can't have a filter on it, it doesn't work, right? So we're going to head over there and get his kind of Impressions. Hopefully uh, he'll give us some insight and we can start to nail down the actual design. So let's go ahead head back to Bashi Aquatics. Satanic leaf tail geckos, sun gazers, indigo snakes. We're back at my buddy Steve's place, Bashy Aquatic. Put all the links in the description. Go show him some love. So listen, uh, yeah, it's going to be, I don't know what he's going to say. He's probably going to laugh. <laughs> but first, I'm going to show you the good stuff that I think you will appreciate. Uh, this obviously is the one elevation. That's how the front of the building would look. Dude, that's wicked. Right? I mean, that that I knew you would uh, like. Yeah. And then this is actually it's the next. missing my logo, though, but we can work on it. Yeah, that. we'll work on the logo. <laughs> then this is actually the back of the building. So just, you know, where there would be the second stairway, we would have all the windows with the logos and stuff like yeah. that. So so that's not that big of a deal. I just wanted to show you that. this. This logo is, is killer. Yeah, yeah. and the whole thing is killer. You know I mean? Just like I can imagine coming through. But this is the part that I'm nervous to even show you because you're going to laugh. I'm nervous to look at it. <laughs> all right. All right, here we go. Now, now keep in mind, this is a very, 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 very rudimentary yep, yep. thing. Yeah. But the filtration part is what I'm worried about, yeah. including this right here. <laughs> it's a big like, part. That's a giant tank. Where do we put filters on that? Do you have another building? Because <laughs> <Another, another, laughs> it looks like we might need another building. I think on the big stuff, if we if we can do some some creative plumbing and get it down into the to lower the lower level, right, would be the trick. So, so I think like these. Do you think that you can do? We could do a lot under? of it depends on what you know what we're keeping in here, right? And how many total gallons and the elevation of the tanks themselves, right? We might be able to get away with. Under tanks. Undermount stuff or right. get real creative with it and, and keep it condensed, but you know, we gotta worry about maintenance and all that stuff. So we has to be accessible no matter what. Right, know? exactly. That that's my concern For too. Sure. You know how crazy. many gallons any of this stuff is yet? It's not I have no idea. I mean so I have no idea. Thing. Yeah. And I'm not even sure like about this. Like this is I want this feel of like roundness yeah, yeah. and like kind of that type kind of thing. Walking around. Right. But I don't necessarily I mean this is I mean it could be smaller tanks, bigger tanks. So is each be, one of these like a different aquarium? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. Sharks have to have a specific shape of a tank. Oh, really? You know, can't have, you know. You yeah, know. they can't have corners, right? Oh, yeah, corners are tough unless it's a huge, huge square tank. Right. right. And then it could, but you want cylinders, ovals, you want that, you know, because right. they don't stop swimming. It might be easier to do a sh main shark tank and a stingray tank evolve around that. I see what you're saying. You know, instead of a stingray tank being in the main shape, let's shape the shark tank right, and then, because we can do anything with stingrays. Right, yeah, yeah. You know? All right, so lots to think about. So, uh, 
Love I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it with you. Just redesign this, no and then I'll get back. for me yeah, for just, how long? Yeah, just get this done for me in the next week or so, and I'll be back, no all right? No problem, Don. <laughs> Merton's water monitors, giant salamanders, radiated tortoises. There's not really many more iconic reptiles than the American alligator, certainly at least in this country, and they really are truly amazing. But did you know that in 1967, they were actually on the threatened with Extinction Act, right? Literally, they were almost extinct. There was hardly any population of them. And without the government actually placing them on the endangered species list, there may not be alligators now, to be honest with you. The other thing that happened is not only protecting them, but also farming them. And I realize farming animals can be a little bit of a controversial topic because, you know, they're raising them, they're using their skin and teeth and bones, and of course their tails for meat to be able to eat and stuff like that. But the truth is, is that farming and the endangered species listing is what saved alligators. That's right. We wouldn't have the alligators we have now if it wasn't for that. And as of the current day, they're actually considered least concern, which means that there's really no concern. And anyone that's been to Florida or Louisiana knows that there's plenty of alligators. And they've even opened up seasons for hunting them now, as we all have seen with some of the popular shows on TV. Now, again, I don't like watching those shows because I don't like seeing animals being killed. But the fact is, is that alligators are a truly amazing thing. The only thing that really threatens them now is habitat destruction, right? The fact that we're kind of encroaching into their land, especially in places like Florida, so many of the Everglades and other areas that alligators live, we're now building on and actually developing, which is a problem. But the fact is, is that alligators are in pretty good shape as far as population now, and I couldn't imagine life without them. So it's definitely a really great success story. Albino snapping turtles, albino speckle kings, radiated rat snakes, trans pecos rat snakes, Arizona green rat snakes, conitz milk snakes, butterscotch right here. She's in your grandma's pocket. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> what? Okay, come on. All right, let's get it out. He's touching the mid body. He's trying to get the shed off. I don't need a play by play. I need the help. Oh. Whoa! What's she doing now? There she goes. She's quick off the jump. She's got nice acceleration. Defense. 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 Who's on Defense. 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 This is a monster. beautiful snake, man. Look at her. She is absolutely gorgeous. Ooh! Oh my god, it's really hard to handle a wet snake. Put it in there, man! What are you doing? <laughs> nice little massage to uh, reward our hard work. Yep. And there you have it. Butterscotch has been clean, shed, and stroked. What are you doing? I'm washing off. Huh? Goliath frog, yellow spotted tree frog, yellow anaconda, final green anaconda, Hide spiny tailed iguanas, Owen Pelly pythons, Baja blue rock lizards, the blue collared lizards, the fly river turtles, jeweled lacertas. I mean, I guess the fact is, is that I am not that content. There's a lot of animals I still want for the Reptarium and over at BHB. And the truth is, is that list is probably only about half the animals that I really want. Uh, I didn't even mention Komodo Dragon, which you know that's a big plus, right? But it's a little bit harder to get. The fact is, is that uh, we definitely need to expand, right? So uh, we gotta expand so I can fit all these new animals because yeah, there's a lot on my wish list. Like I mentioned, it seems like I definitely have a bigger wish list and I'm not settled on the animals. Let me know down in the comments what your wish list is. I'd love to see what you'd like to get in the future what you'd like to work with and while you're at it let me know what you want me to add to the reptarium or aquarium in the future uh, i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did do me a favor hit this playlist right over here on this side do me a favor and hit that subscription button i surely appreciate it have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you on the next one